Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihi illa falamudilla lah. Wa man yudlil falan tajida lahu waliya murshida. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah al-ahadu al-qahhar. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Indeed, all praise and thanks belongs to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala alone. Who seek his help, his assistance and guidance in all things. He whom Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala guides, there is no misguidance for him. And he whom Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala leads astray, there is no guidance for him. Except through the will and permission of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala alone. And I bear witness and testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib al-Hashimi al-Qurashi was the final messenger and prophet sent to all of mankind. O you who believe, fear Allah. Fear Allah as he deserves to be feared. And do not die except in a state of Islam. Do not die except that you are Muslims. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqtatan min lisani afal qawli. Alhamdulillah, this is lesson six of our reading of Riyadh al-Salihin of the great Imam, Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah. Now, the brothers informed me just before we started that there was a bit of miscommunication between me and yani, the masjid itself because they didn't get a chance to properly announce the dars because we've been off for the whole month of August. Now, why we were off for the month of August before anyone starts judging me here, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all with Jannah, Ya Rabb. Qulu Amin. Now, why we were off was beginning of August started with COVID and then the middle of August was travel overseas and then we came back and as soon as we're back, we're with you, inshallah. Fa alhamdulillah, we're back. The classes are back on Wednesdays after Isha until daylight saving, which I think is the first week of October and then we'll go back to Maghrib. But for now, dars back on, inshallah. This is what I've been told to say. Yani, inshallah, this is yani, the guys behind me in the room there, they're okay. The dars is back on. After Isha, every Wednesday, weekly, bi'idnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. If anyone can't rock up, they can listen to it online. It's a live stream. Walillah alhamd. And the sisters, I don't know if the front door was open today, but inshallah from next week, the front door will be opened and you guys can use the elevators and whatnot. But uh, the back entrance is open, I believe so. And inshallah, it is all khair. We were supposed to take two hadith today, but looking at how many brothers are missing, from the usual hudur, from the usual brothers that were here, because of the miscommunication, we will put it on that, insha'Allah, and they couldn't come. So we're just going to take one hadith. It'll be a shorter dars, insha'Allah. Few brothers have curfew, yani in the literal meaning. So we'll get a, a early uh, yani send off today, bi idnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. The hadith that we're going to go through uh, was hadith number five. And we are still in the first chapter of the chapter of sincerity and intentions. Now, this is the hadith وعن أبي يزيد معن ابن يزيد ابن الأخنس رضي الله عنهم وهو وأبوه وجده صاحبيون قال كان أبي يزيد أخرج دنانير يتصدق بها فوضعها عند رجل في المسجد فجئت فأخذتها فأتيت بها فأتيته بها فقال والله ما إياك أرد والله ما إياك أرد فخاصمته إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال لك ما نويت يا يزيد ولك ما أخذت يا معن رواه البخاري This is a good hadith This one is a goodie Lesson number six Hadith number five on the authority of Abu Yazid معن Bin Yazid, the son of Yazid, bin al Akhnas, the son of al Akhnas. May Allah be pleased with them all. Imam al Nawi rahimahullah said, He, his father, and his grandfather are all companions of the Prophet. Him, his father, and his grandfather were all companions of the Prophet. And so Ma'an says, My father Yazid had taken out money with, يعني, out of charity, to give out in charity. So my father Yazid had taken out money to give out in charity. And he placed this money with a man from the masjid, from a man in the mosque. So I came to this man and I took it from him. 
And then I went to my father with this money. So and we'll get to it. I know it's a little bit confusing, but khalas, we'll get to it. So I went to my father with this money. So Yazid, the father, he says, when seeing the money, he said, by Allah, I did not intend for you to take this money. By Allah, I did not intend for you to take this money. And يعني, then Ma'an says, so then I challenged him. I argued with him, but I took him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so he took this disagreement, him and his father, he takes his father to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, for you is what you intended, O Yazid, the father, and for you is what you had taken, O Ma'an, the son. And this is collected by Imam Al-Bukhari. Now, firstly, we take the companion of this hadith the companion of this prophetic statement. And subhanAllah, in Sahih al-Bukhari, in this actual hadith, we see that يعني, Ma'an radiallahu an, he says, the son, he says, بَايَعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنَا وَأَبِي وَجَدِّي وَخَطَبَ عَلَيْ فَأَنْكَحَانِي He says, radiallahu an, that I pledged my allegiance to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم me, my father, and my grandfather. We all came and gave the Pledge of Allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he says, وَخَطَبَ عَلَيْهِ That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked a family for their daughter to be engaged to me. So he was يعني, the hookup of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the link of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the one who got me engaged. فَأَنْكَحَنِي And he is the one who read my nikah. He got me married. So, and also in the Musnad Imam Ahmad, in the same hadith, there is another wording where he says, خَاصَمْتُ, خاصمت إِلَيْهِ فَأَفْلَجَنِي That I took my disagreement, I took a disagreement. He didn't say which disagreement in this narration. He says, I had a disagreement and I took that disagreement to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he ruled in my favor. The Prophet ﷺ ruled in my way. Yani, the other guy thought he was going to win and the Prophet ﷺ chose me over that person. He took my side. So he took this as a point of pride. But he didn't mention that it was his dad that he took to court, yani, quote unquote, to the Prophet ﷺ. Now Ma'an, very quickly, was a great companion of the Prophet ﷺ who is, yani, embraced Islam with his father quite late. And the story of his father embracing Islam is يعني, famous where his whole family embraced Islam except one wife. And يعني, the verse was revealed to leave that wife. But that is يعني, a verse that was revealed later. It wasn't early on. So this, from this we learn that he embraced Islam late. And he was a warrior radiallahu an, and it states that he يعني, partook in a battle in a battle called Marj Rahit in the year 54, and in that battle he passed away. And يعني, as it was mentioned in Fathul al-Bari, that at the time of Muawiyah, he had uh, positions of power. And in the time of Umar radiallahu an, he was one of his close advisors, someone who was close to Umar radiallahu an. But he was someone who was poor in his youth. And we know that through the hadith that we are taking. He was poor in his youth, radiallahu an. And he was someone who could go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for all of his issues. From one hadith, we know that he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for an issue with his father, family issues. He goes and he complains about his dad and he takes his dad to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So it was a point where he knew that he had the respect of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he himself respected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's word. And he also respected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give up one of the most important things in his life, the choice of who he was going to get married to. It's something that you just leave it blind and you go up to someone you respect and you say, Khalas, get me married. And he takes this responsibility and goes and gets you someone. And then he reads over your nikah. This is something that isn't easy. You haven't seen, you haven't done it. You're just saying, yalla, you find me someone and inshallah it's good. 
So he trusted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for all of his affairs. So he wanted to get married, he went to the Prophet. He had an issue with his dad, he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this shows respect. Now, he witnessed the opening of Damascus. And again, he, his father, his grandfather were not just Muslims. And now this is a good thing that you know you have a line of Muslims. But not just Muslims, they were from the greatest echelon of this ummah. The greatest part of this ummah, they were all companions of the Prophet Now, the hadith has some very important rulings in it. This hadith has some very important issues inside of it. And because we're not going to take the second hadith, we can sit on it a little bit. Don't worry, we're not going to be here for too long. You guys can get back to your curfews, inshaAllah, very, very quickly, bi-idhnillah. Now, one, the story itself. Let's just go through it quickly and we'll try to derive whatever we can from it. Firstly, the father had money. The father had money. And he took money out to give out in charity. So he takes out money from his wealth to give out. That was his niya, his intention. And the second thing is, is that he takes his money and he gives the money to a man in the masjid. And in this we see that it is permissible for you to give your money to someone for him to spread it as he sees fit. Because he gave this money to this man and said, you sort it out for me. And Ibn Hajar rahimahullah says in Fathul Bari in the Sharh of this hadith that the person had permission to do as he saw fit with the money in charity. And whoever he saw was deserving of the charity, give it. Bismillah. Wazir. Give it out. So the son comes to this man in the masjid because the masjid was a point where people would go to when they needed help. The masjid in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the fuqara would sleep at the back. They would be provided for a place of shelter in the back of the masjid. It was a point where it was they could find solace in there. We find when Ali radiallahu an had an issue at home, he was arguing with his wife, daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it means that these things happen in life. Where did he go to? He went to the masjid. He went to the masjid. And when he was in the masjid, Turab came on him. And dust came over him. And then he got the laqab, Aba Turab. Right? Because of this issue. But the masjid was a point where you go to seek refuge. So he goes to the masjid. And he goes to this man. And the scholars say that either this man knew that he was the son of Yazid, the son of this companion. Or maybe he didn't. Either way. But he saw a faqir in front of him. Someone who was deserving of sadaqah. So he said, here's some money. Take the money. So then now the son goes and takes this money back to his father. And the father sees his own wealth. And then the father says, and this is the whole point of why this hadith is in this chapter of sincerity, of having a niyyah chapter of intentions. He says, "Ma iyyaka arad." I didn't intend for you to get this money. I could have given it to you now. I gave it to the bloke in the masjid. I gave it to the brother in the masjid for him to give it out. Not to you. I could have done that to you. I didn't intend for you to get this money. So then his son obviously disagrees. His son says, "I have the money." And you can't take it from me now. It's sadaqah. It's charity. So he says, I took. Yani the, think about how big this is. This is not uquq al-walidain. This is not dishonoring your parents. No, he took the Prophet. So he, he took his own father to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this shows something that is very important. That you can take your parents to a point of scholar to a point of scholarship, to a point of someone in power when it comes to the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his legislation. But not that you spread the word outside. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You don't يعني, spread the word outside. No. He took the dad and said, we're going to go to the Prophet We're going to sort out our differences there. We're not going to talk about each other from behind Facebook. On a WhatsApp group. We're not going to do that. We're going to go to the Prophet. ﷺ. So the son 
takes his own father to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they lay out their case. The father is saying, I wanted to give charity. I don't want to, يعني, my reward, I, I want my reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I didn't give it to him for like, I didn't give it to him for a reason. And the son says, I am deserving of charity. I'm poor. I need the money. So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, for you, O Yazid, is your reward what you intended. You wanted to give out in charity, you got your reward. And for you, man, for you, you wanted to take it, so for you it's halal. You can keep it. So over here, this shows us the greatness of having an intention. The greatness of having a niya present in all of your actions. Everything that you do, make sure that you have an intention. And subhanAllah, from this hadith, we find that even if you give something to someone who is not deserving of it, and you found out later on that he wasn't deserving of it, then you still have your reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very vast. He's not someone who's bakhil. He's not holding things back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to get your rewards. And it comes back to innamal amal bin niyat. Everything is judged by its intentions. Every action is going to be judged how you intended. So this was the main aspect of this hadith. That your intention, even if you didn't want it to go somewhere, but you had a good niya, your niya was for a specific outcome. Even if the outcome wasn't achieved, you still get the reward. Your reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shows the importance of making sure your niyyah is upright. Don't just do something al-fadi for no reason. Do something with reason and make sure it's the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you give charity, make sure it's liwajhillah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, other important issues is that a son or a daughter can receive charity from a parent. A son or a daughter can receive charity from a parent if it's an optional charity, not zakah. Zakah, generally speaking, the general rule of thumb is that zakah is not to be given to the offspring because it's wajib for you to be giving for your offspring. However, there are cases, very subtle cases, and you need to go and see a sheikh if this is a case that yeah, and you think, Sheikh, am I allowed to give my zakah to this person? Get it? Yeah, and he fact checked. Right? Not just a quick Islam Q&A, quick Google search. Not a, an actual Sheikh. Present your idea to him that Sheikh, this so and so is my relative, my family, my direct family, my son, my daughter. And he has, for instance, such and such issue. Am I allowed to give zakah to him? And the Sheikh will give you yes or no. But the rule of thumb is you have optional charity, something that you can give yani anywhere, it is better for you to give to your direct family. This is something that is very important. That charity starts at home. And this will be further explained in the next hadith, inshaAllah, that even the morsel of food that you put in the yani mouth of your wife is, can, can be considered a charity if you have the right niya. If your heart is in the right place, and you have the correct intention, then everything that you do, even towards your family, can be considered a charity. So this is something that is very, very important. Now, another issue that the scholars mention is that a parent cannot take back any sadaqah that they give to their child. A parent, if they give to their child some sadaqah, they can never take it back. And this is the opposite with a gift. If a parent gives a gift to a child, then they are entitled to take it back as long as the child has not yet spent it. So for instance, you give your kid 50, you give him $50, right? And then you're like, oh man, I need to fill up petrol. Petrol is getting a bit expensive. Allah, give me back my 50. You can take it back Islamically. Because unless, unless, he has gone out to the candy store, he's gone out to yani, Wooly, he's gone out to the grocery, whatever the corner shop is, and he uses that 50. You gave him 50 bucks, that was your problem. Now you can't say, you owe me $50 because I wanted to take it back. 
You can't do that to your own. Haram alayhi. He's just a little kid. But you can't do that. But if he hadn't had spent it, you can take back your money. And some of the scholars says that this is by, this is the majority opinion of the scholars. Now, second, another issue that we did mention earlier is that a son should not publicly expose the issues within a family. A son should not publicly expose anything that is happening within a family. The secrets of a family, the private dealings within a family, this should not be exposed to the general public. However, can be exposed to the one who can make a difference in the affair. So when you are going, and if you're talking to your, on the train, or wherever you are at work, now you have no right to talk about your parents in any way that is negative. You are not allowed, this is from uquq al-walidayn, disobeying and dishonoring your family and your parents specifically. You have no right talking about your parents in any negative way. This is not the respect that we give our parents. What can you do is like Ma'an did, he took his parent to a place of power. I'm not saying court, no, I'm saying sheikh. To a sheikh. And you try to sort out your dealings within a private atmosphere. I'm not saying any question and answer session in front of the people. Sheikh, my dad did no. It's not how you deal with your parents. It's not birr. It's not يعني, being good towards your family. It's not honoring your family. And this is يعني, a method that Islam has put to maintain the respect between the elders and the youngins. The respect between the generations. It's very important that respect goes both ways. That the young يعني, respect the old and the old respect the young. Now, another يعني, issue is uh, that Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen عليه, and other scholars have taken rulings from this hadith and they've expanded on it. They've taken rulings from this hadith and expanded on it. And it shows يعني, from this hadith the importance of having a niyyah, having a good intention. One example that he gives is that, for instance, someone has zakah. Someone has zakah, and then he goes outside and he sees someone who he thinks is deserving of zakah. Now then, he gives his zakah, whatever his amount of zakah is. Then he comes home and says, I gave my, my zakah to Fulan bin Fulan, so and so, such and such person. And then his family tells him, That bloke has more money than me and you. Why are you giving him zakah? What's wrong with you? And this happens. People give their zakah to places where they're not deserving. Now, does this person have to give zakah again? Think about it, yani. Think about the problem that this person has. Zakah is only applicable to certain people. There are certain asnaf of people, conditions, categories of people where you're supposed to give zakah to. Everyone knows this, right? You can't just give zakah to anybody doesn't work like that. It has to be a specific condition. So it's like, يعني, thinking about it is like, you need to have wudu to pray. To give this money to this person, he needs to be of such and such category. So the person is going through shock right now. And sometimes, يعني, okay, 500 bucks, 200 bucks, doesn't really matter. When it's, you're talking in thousands, thousands, and people have given this amount out, and then they realize, what have I done? What have I done? Now, one issue is, is that taking money out is not easy. There's a reason why Islam has ordained for us to give zakah, that it's so hard for us to give the most prized thing in our possession, our money. You can agree with me, don't agree with me, I don't care, but everyone knows that that money in your wallet is aziz al qalb. It's, it's something treasured. It's why we have wallets, why we keep it in banks, why we keep it in vaults. Brothers have يعني, safes under the ground. It's true. There is more cash money in our communities than any other community in the world, Allah uh, This, But why zakah is so important, is such a momentous thing in the Islamic religion, is because you have to give it up for the sake of Allah. And not just once in your life, no, every single year. Every single year, you have to. It's not too much. It's not something excessive. It's not something crazy. It's not like half of your wealth. No. It's something very, very small. 
that very, very small sometimes when it's a big amount can become very big. And if there is some mashayikh, subhanAllah, who said that if people gave the zakah properly, we wouldn't have any starvation in this world. <laughs> Everyone would have enough to eat. Everyone would have enough. But people don't want to give out their zakah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection. But if someone gives his zakah to the wrong place, he gives it to someone who's actually wealthy, he doesn't know. Does he have to give his zakah again? No. For him is what he intended. He doesn't have to give it out again that year. But he should also remember, don't be an idiot next time and give your zakah properly to someone else. Don't get stung by the same hole twice. Yani I'm not saying that he's, he has to give zakah again that year, but he should also make sure that he tries his hardest to yani, give zakah to where it's deserving. Now the second, for instance, for second instance that Sheikh uh, Ibn Uthaymin alayhi, says, the second type of example that he gives is that if someone wants to give a waqf, right? He wants to give something as an endowment to the Muslim community, something that can never be sold now. Something that is forever for the benefit of the community. So he says, for instance, he's outside, and imagine he has, and Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin says he has يعني, land. And he says that he has in his niyyah, he wants to give a small plot of land. However, when he's saying, he mixes it up and says the big plot of land. Or he points at the wrong one. It must have happened. The Shaykh wouldn't have given us an example from nowhere. So يعني, he points at the wrong plot, or he points at, or he says something that he didn't intend. A slip of the tongue. That I gave 57A, he wanted to give 63B. Mathalan, could happen. And there's a lot of wealth in our community, alhamdulillah. But if he wanted to give that as a waqf, does he have to give upon what he said? Or what he ashr to, but he what didn't intend it? No. He has to give what he intended. The intention is what is mattered. Now another example, and I thought this was a funny one, but he, another example that the Shaykh gives, is, for instance, if his wife was يعني, uh, obstructed or like in a, uh, was, n was captive or was held back or something, and he, she, he says, Intitaliq, that you're free now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open you up. I'm going to free this habs that you're in, free you from this cage or free you from whatever you're stuck in. I'm going to open it up for you. And so the scholar, he says, Rahmatullah Alay, that she's not divorced because he didn't intend that. And he didn't intend for her to be divorced. He just was saying it in the literal way that you are now free. So with that, I thought that's enough jokes for today. Uh, we had, يعني, there's another hadith, it's a long one. But because the brothers haven't and the sisters haven't, يعني, didn't get the message, I think with that we conclude, inshallah. If anyone has any questions, we have يعني, space of time, maybe five minutes, inshallah. If the sisters have any questions, they can write it on the live feed, I think on Masjid al-Sunnah, on the page. And if you يعني, have no questions, then we can all leave together and we can all have smiles today. Barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Not a single question. I love you, brothers. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good, good. That's good. It means that dars was clear. Huh? Tell the brothers, Darus is back on. Bismillah. <laughs>